Hey there crafty friends, my name's Misty. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Glee Spin Designs. In today's video, I'm going to be making some Easter and spring home decor projects that you definitely don't want to miss. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but whether you're shopping in stores or online, moss this year for spring and Easter decor is super trending, and I personally really love the look of it, so I decided I wanted to add a little bit of that into my own home as well. For this project, I'm going to be using one of the wood bunny cutouts from the Dollar Tree. I removed the tag and flipped it over just to add a piece of tape onto the back so that I could fill the hole from where the tag was at with some hot glue. You could use wood filler, spackling, whatever you personally like. This was just quick and easy for me, so that's what I decided to do. Now, of course, you can paint your bunny whatever color you would personally like. I wanted to have a really nice bright white bunny but I wanted to add some texture to it. So I added a little bit of baking soda to the white chalk paint that I'm using. And to add a little bit of an extra texture, I'm using some of the Dollar Tree sand. I have mentioned before in previous videos, it does not matter what color the sand is because the paint is going to cover that anyways. I just personally love the texture that the sand adds to the paint and it also adds for really great coverage. You do not have to add the sand, you do not have to add the baking soda. You can just paint your bunny, stain it, again do whatever you personally like and it makes your heart happy that you like to see in your own home. I painted the entire bunny except for the tail and the raised part of the ears. Once your bunny is completely dry, you can really see that texture come out, and I only had to use one coat of that paint. Now I'm going to be using some of the Dollar Tree floral moss, and I like to take the moss between my hands and rub it back and forth just so that I can get the moss to be a little bit finer and not so big and chunky. To add the moss to the bunny, I'm using some Mod Podge and just a little paintbrush, and I'm taking the Mod Podge and I'm going to start with the bunny's tail. And when adding the Mod Podge onto your piece, you want to add it not really thin, but not super, super thick, but you do want it to be a little bit thicker than normal just because you want the moss to have something to really adhere to. Once you have the tail completely covered with the Mod Podge, I just grab a little handful of the moss and I just start placing it right onto that bunny's tail. Once the tail is completely covered, I tap it off just to get the extra moss to fall off and then I go on and move on to the ears and I do the same exact thing, adding a decent amount of Mod Podge so that the moss can really stick to it and I take the moss and place it right on top of the ears. I will kind of sprinkle it on at first and then grab little bits in my hand and really dab it into the Mod Podge that is on the ear. And you're going to repeat the same step with the second ear, adding the Mod Podge, and then placing the moss onto the Mod Podge. I really want the tail and the ears to stick out a lot more than what they already are and so that the moss is just a little bit thicker. So I do decide to go in with a second coat and I just take my paintbrush, add some Mod Podge on top of the moss where the tail and the ears are and I just take the moss once again and I do grab some of the bigger chunks this time and place it on top of the Mod Podge and I feel like it really makes the tail and the ears stick out so much more. Again, I added a second coat onto the ears just like I did with the tail and I am personally loving the way this is turning out. Now you could do whatever you would like with your bunny. You could add it to a wreath. You could hang it back up if you would like to. I wanted mine to be more of a shelf sitter or sit up on my mantle. So I wanted it to stand on its own. So I'm using some of the Dollar Tree little wood cubes. And all I'm going to do is add some hot glue to the front leg on the back, add one of the wood cubes, and then I take two more of the wood cubes and place them on the back of the bunny back behind the back legs and once you have all of those glued on it will stand up completely on its own. I love how quick and easy this project was and the final look is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. 
For this project, I picked up one of these hanging wood rounds from Dollar Tree. You do not need the hanger, so I just simply pulled that off. They are just stapled to the side, and it was very easy to come apart. At Dollar Tree, they also have these smaller wood slices. They come two in a pack, and I have noticed that normally one of the wood slices is a little bit larger than the other. I held up both of the sizes of the wood slices and I personally liked the smaller one better. I even liked the look of it better. So I'm going to add some hot glue at the very top of our large wood slice. And then I placed the smaller one right on top where I added the hot glue. So if you have not figured it out yet, I'm making a wood slice bunny. So for the bunny's ears and the bunny's feet, I'm going to be using these oval shaped wood slices from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using these oval shaped wood pieces for our bunny's ears as well as the feet. So what I did is I found two sets of two where they were both around the same size in each set. I grabbed one of the sets and placed them above the smaller wood round, basically above our bunny's head. And I just placed them underneath where I would like them to be. Then I added some hot glue and placed those onto the back of the bunny's head. By doing this, it also makes the bunny flush with the surface. Okay, come on, how cute is this already turning out? Those bunny ears are absolutely adorable and the wood slices, again, also work to create the bunny's feet as well. So I took the second set of the wood slices that are oval and I placed them where I would personally like my bunny's feet on the big wood round down at the bottom and I hot glued those into place as well. I do want to mention if you would like to, you could use wood glue for this project to glue everything together. I just personally used the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks because it just is a lot quicker for video purposes. I personally want to keep my bunny super simple, but I want to add a little nose and whiskers. So for the nose, I'm going to be using one of these wood beads from Dollar Tree. It was already painted white when I bought it, but I do want it to sit a little bit more flush with the bunny's head. So I just grabbed a piece of sandpaper and sanded a little bit of the roundness off of the wood bead so that it would sit onto the bunny's head a little bit better. Before I glue my bunny's nose down, I want to add the whiskers and I'm actually just going to use the jute hanger that was on the larger wood slice that we took apart in the beginning. I just simply took my fingers and twisted the jute cord and placed it through the wood bead, then cut off the part where I twisted it. And I'm going to start untwisting the jute so that it looks a lot more like the bunny's whiskers. Once I had that side untwisted, to figure out how long I actually wanted the whiskers to be, I just held the bead and the jute cord up to the bunny's nose, or where the bunny's nose is going to go, and I just cut off the excess jute and started untwisting that side as well, so that we had the whiskers on both sides of the bunny's nose. Once I liked the look of it, I just added some hot glue on the side of the bead where I sanded it down a little bit and placed it in the center of the smaller wood round bunny's head. And I just love how this is turning out. I think it is so cute and so simple. But just so that it's not super simple, I wanted to add a little bow around the bunny's neck. For my bunny's bow, I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree lace ribbon and to create the bow, I just place it into the awareness ribbon shape, then grab that top loop and bring it down to where the ribbon meets in the center. And then to tie it all together, I am going to be using some of the Dollar Tree jute twine. I cut off a piece of that and then I take the lace and lay it down so that the jute string is in the center. And then I just tie a simple knot. And once you pull the two string sides together, you will see it creates this really cute bow. You can change the bow size by just pulling on the tails or even pulling on the loops. But once you have the size that you like, you want to pull that jute cord really, really tight and you can extra knot it if you would like. After I had the bow nice and secure, I did cut off the excess jute twine and I did decide to dovetail the ends to the bow. And how I do that is I just take the end, fold it in half and cut at an inward diagonal angle and you will have this really cute dovetail to your ribbon. 
I love how these bows are super simple, quick, and easy to make. Before I actually glue anything down, I like to set it in place just so I can see if I like the look of how it is turning out. And that is when I noticed that the tails on the bow were just a little bit too long for what I was going for. So I did decide to cut a little bit of that excess off. I also decided I wanted it to look like the bunny had a little lace collar going around its cute little neck. So I just took some of the Dollar Tree lace ribbon and I held it up so I knew the size that I would need, but I did want it to be half the size of the width that it is. So I just added some hot glue and folded it in half. And then I held it back up to underneath the bunny's head around the neck. And I knew I was going to put a little bit of hot glue underneath the front part of the bunny's neck just so that the ribbon really held in place like I wanted it to and then again I wrapped it around the back added some hot glue and glued both sides of the ribbon down Now that the bunny's collar is on, I'm going to take the lace bow, add some hot glue to the back of it, and place it off to the side of the bunny's neck onto the collar so that it just looks like it has this cute little collar with a bow on it. You can add other details if you would like, but again, I'm going to be making this as kind of a wreath charm in a way. So I want to take some jute cord and I'm going to place some hot glue onto the back of the bunny and I am doing this so that I have something to tie the bunny to my wreath because I don't want to glue the bunny to the wreath I want to be able to take it off and exchange it out for other seasonal decor for extra security I glued a piece of a popsicle stick or craft stick to the top of the jute now I am bringing my beautiful wreath that I actually bought off of Timu. It is so cute. I love the colors. And all I'm going to do again is I take the jute and I am going to tie the bunny onto the wreath. I personally put my bunny off to the side and a little bit crooked. You can place yours in the center or wherever you would like your bunny to be. But again, I did want to be able to remove the bunny and exchange it for different seasonal decor on this wreath so that is why I tied it on instead of gluing it. Once my bunny was nice and secure this wreath was done and I am so obsessed. Really quickly before we move on to the next DIY project, I want to show you another idea you can use for that wood bunny that I just made. This is actually a second bunny that I decided to make and as you can see I decided to use different ribbon and add a cute little flower, just different colors as well. So I want this to be able to sit up on my shelf or again my fireplace mantle, so using those wood cubes from the Dollar Tree again I just take one and place it onto the back of the bunny and that's it all you have to do is set it up on a shelf and it looks so adorable For this project, I'm going to be using one of the Dollar Tree cloches. I have seen them in two different sizes, and this is the larger of the two. I recently bought this glass candlestick holder from a local Goodwill, but you could use a Dollar Tree glass candlestick holder as well. And really, it doesn't even have to be a glass candlestick holder. It could be any other candlestick holder or base that you would like to use. I decided to spray my candlestick holder with the Rust-Oleum flat white spray paint. And on the cloche, I removed all the stickers and I decided to paint the black base with that spray paint as well. Now, I originally made the cloche portion of this DIY project 
around the fall time so I do have a little pumpkin in a pot up in the corner but I'm not going to be using that I am going to be making something different that I used for Easter slash spring decor to put inside the cloche I just wanted the cloche itself to be something that I could use all year round and change out the decor for each season or holiday I then took some Spanish moss and cut it down to smaller pieces so that it just didn't stick up as much in the bottom of the cloche so to glue that down i did take some mod podge and way too much might i add so i did have to kind of take some of that off and i just start basically putting the mod podge all over the base but in the center where you see that hole i left a little bit of a circle where i did not put any mod podge or any of the moss just so that whatever I decide to put inside the cloche will actually sit flush and not have to sit on top of any moss. I then start taking Spanish moss and I just start placing it onto the base where I added the Mod Podge and I do cut it even into smaller pieces just because I do want it to be as flat as possible so that I can put the cloche top on and it also doesn't hide our piece that we're putting in the center. Once the candlestick holder was dry, I was able to start gluing the base to the cloche on top of the candlestick holder, and I just used some Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. You guys, I left my hot glue gun on, on high for a little too long, and it burnt the glue stick, so that's why it was that color. But I just glued the base right on top of the candlestick holder, and then I felt that it was just a little bit too plain still, so I decided to use some of the Dollar Tree metal ribbon. I just simply took the metal ribbon and wrapped it around the base of the cloche to figure out the size that I needed and I cut it down at this ribbon cuts very easily and I do also spray paint this with the white spray paint as well. To attach the metal ribbon around the base of the cloche, I'm just using some all-purpose glue that I bought from the Dollar Tree. It said that it adheres to metal and to plastic so I figured that would probably be the best option to use. In my experience, I've noticed that the hot glue sticks don't really adhere the metal to plastic like I would like it to. To keep the metal ribbon in place so that the glue had time to dry, I just used some of these Dollar Tree little pink clips and they worked perfectly. Now that the base of the closure is complete, I do show me placing the pumpkin on to the base and putting the top on because once I put the top on, I realized it was just missing something and I kind of came up with a really cute little idea. For the top of the cloche, I wanted to create kind of a finial look. I do believe that's what they are called, but either way, it is also kind of a handle that you can use to take the glass looking plastic piece off. So I took some Dollar Tree beads and I glued two of them together. One was a normal circle bead and the other was more of an oval shaped. And I just hot glued those two together, spray painted them with the white spray paint as well. And then to cover the hole in the top of the bead, I just used some Dollar Tree white spackling and you never even would have known it was there. And you would have never known that this little top piece was made from beads. To attach the top piece, I just added some hot glue onto the bottom of the bead and then glued it to the center of the plastic top part of the cloche. Look how adorable it looks with that little top piece on there. And now I'm going to show you what I made for Easter slash spring for the center of the cloche. I bought a pack of these styrofoam eggs from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to actually turn it into a cute little moss bunny head. So I'm going to be using the floral moss from Dollar Tree as well. And again, I do just kind of break it up into a little bit smaller pieces. And then I'm taking some Mod Podge and I do place the styrofoam egg onto a paintbrush just so that I could really get the Mod Podge all over the egg and not have to hold the egg and get it all over my fingers. So I just shoved a paintbrush up in the end and started adding Mod Podge all over the entire egg. Again, you do want to make sure that you add a nice thick amount of Mod Podge. You do not want it to be too thin because you want to be able to really adhere the moss to the egg. Once I had the egg completely covered in the Mod Podge, I tried rolling the egg in the moss, but then I quickly noticed that it just really adhered better to the egg if I put the moss and patted it down onto the egg instead of rolling it. 
I set the egg off to dry and then I take a Dollar Tree Chanel stem pipe cleaner, whatever you would like to call it, and I only needed one to create both of the ears for the bunny. So I just put it in the shape that I would like the bunny's ears to be and I noticed that all I had to do was just cut the Chanel stem in half and then I would have two pieces to make both of the bunny's ears. Now I wanted my bunny's ears to go with the bunny's head and all look like it was made out of the moss. So I just took some Mod Podge and I did use my fingers. You can use a paintbrush if you would like. And I covered the entire Chanel stem in the Mod Podge and then I just placed some, some moss right on top making sure that it was all adhered and you didn't see any of the actual Chanel stem underneath it and it looked like it was completely made from the moss. And of course I did those steps with both of the pieces of the Chanel stem. Once everything was completely dry, it was time to add the bunny's ears to its head. So I just took my scissors and pushed two holes up at the top of the bunny's head where I'm going to be placing the ears. To create the bunny's ears, I take the moss covered Chanel stem and I just fold it in half, kind of creating a loop up at the top. And I started to press it down into the hole in the styrofoam, but I realized I didn't really like the size very much of the ear. I wanted it to be a tad bit smaller and a little bit more pointed at the top. So I just took it out, cut a little bit of the Chanel stem down, and then put it back into the ear shape and shoved it right back in the hole that was in the styrofoam. I then did the same steps to create the second bunny's ear. I cut off a little bit of the Chanel stem and placed it down into the hole that I used my scissors to make in the styrofoam egg. But I did make the hole a little bit bigger for this one and I added some hot glue. I do end up going back and just adding some hot glue in the first bunny's ear just to make sure that it was really held into place. I went back and forth on whether or not I was going to leave the bunny's head very simple and just made from the moss or if I wanted to add a little bit more to it and I did decide to add some baby breath flowers right up at the top by the ear of the bunny. I personally love baby's breath. I keep them from bouquets or flowers that somebody buys me or that I buy just for around the house. I love drying out baby's breath, using it in projects or even just putting it in a vase all on its own. So anyways, all I did was cut a little bit of the flowers off of the actual baby breath stem and I just put them in a little bundle and glued them up by the bunny's ear. Like I had mentioned a few times previously, I do want to be able to change out the decor inside the cloche. So in order to add the bunny's head, I put a very, very small little dot of hot glue just so that the bunny's head would stay in place, but I would still be able to very easily remove it. Once I had the bunny's head in place, I realized I wanted to add a little bit of the baby's breath and also a couple other little floral picks that I do show you guys here in a second down to the bottom of the base where the moss is. I just felt like it needed something and spring is definitely right here. So I wanted to add some more flowers just to give it more of that springy vibe. I felt like it needed a little bit more color to it, so I did decide to add these yellow flowers from Dollar Tree and these little lavender flowers that I cut apart. The lavender is from Walmart, but I do want to say that most of the Walmart florals and floral stems are cheaper than the ones from Dollar Tree and they are better quality. So I definitely suggest you check out the floral section next time you go to your local Walmart. All I did was use my scissors to cut the flowers apart so that I had each individual little flower and I hot glued some of the yellow ones as well as some of the purple ones on top of the bunny's head and once I was done placing a few up there in that little gathering of flowers I did also add a few of the yellow and a few of the purple lavender flowers down at the bottom on the base in the, the moss just like I did with the baby's breath. Once I had all the flowers in place and where I would like them all I had to do was place the top on the cloche and look how stinking cute.
For this project, I actually created the burlap garland part of it in the previous DIY video that is on my channel right before this one. I am going to show you guys really quickly how I made that, but the reason why I am putting it in this video as well is because I want to show you guys how I dressed the garland up for the Easter and spring season. So really quickly, just to recap on how I made the burlap garland is I used some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I cut it down to the size of the garland that I wanted my garland to personally be. And then I took some tan Dollar Tree burlap and the white burlap I actually got from Big Lots. It was on sale, so I got a really good deal. But all you have to do is cut those down into strips and then you're going to alternate the colors of the burlap tying those strips onto the nautical rope. I do want to mention that when I cut the burlap strips, I did cut some shorter, some longer, some wider, and some skinnier, just so that it had more of a messy look. Tie as many burlap pieces as you need to get the length of the garland that you would like yours to personally be. And to create the ends of my garland to hang it, I am just taking the nautical rope putting it into a loop shape and then taking some jute twine, tying it into place so that the loop stays into place and wrapping it around a bunch of times, gluing it down and cutting off the excess. And I did repeat that same step on the other side to create both ends to my garland. To give this beautiful burlap garland a little bit more of an Easter or spring vibe, I'm going to be taking some of these little Easter decor pieces. They have a wood look to them, and I'm going to remove them and start taking off the little pom-pom for the tail. These little pom-pom tails are just simply glued on, so I just took my fingernail and popped them all right off. I wasn't sure on how many of these little bunnies I was going to add to the garland, so I just took the tails off eight of them, and then what I'm going to do is actually cover these in the moss so that they go with the rest of my spring decor. Just like I did with the rest of the DIYs in this video, all I had to do was take some Mod Podge, I covered the entire front of the bunny, and then I just sprinkled on some of the moss, making sure to pat it down into the Mod Podge so that it stuck really well. I then took the rest of the bunnies and added Mod Podge on top of them and placed the moss on top as well so that I had all these little moss covered bunnies. To finish off these little moss bunnies, once they were all completely dry, I just took my hot glue gun and started placing those little pom pom tails back on the bunnies where they previously were. Next, it was time to add them to the garland. Again, I wasn't sure how many I was going to be using, so before I glue anything down, I like to place everything where I think it should be, and then once I like the look of it, that's when I go back in and I start gluing everything down. To add the bunnies to the garland, all I did was use my hot glue gun, add some hot glue to the back of each one of the bunnies, and place them back down onto the garland. Once I had all the bunnies glued onto the garland, I did mess around with the burlap strands a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a messy natural look. Once I was happy with the burlap strands, that was it. All I had to do was hang it up on my fireplace mantle and I think it is so darn adorable. I love the little bunnies on it and I did decide to add one extra thing because in my previous video, I noticed that the garland just alone before the bunnies looked really cute with some fairy lights. So all I did was weave the fairy lights in and threw out the burlap strands and I love how this project turned out. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to see more DIY home decor, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. I truly hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye!